Well, we have made it to our first stop south and west, so southwest, but we're not where we thought we'd be. Well, the timing of us not being able to stay where we had anticipated and planned to stay is really kind of humorous to us. And that's because Alana and I have just finished an article on our brand new website, plug, plug, plug for midliferovers.com. We did a, an article where we talked about is staying in a campground overlanding or not, particularly the ones where you would have uh, a registration or a guaranteed site. We talked about the advantages of that versus the boondocking and backcountry camping. Now, that wasn't our intent to boondock. We actually had planned to stay at Garden of the Gods um, little area in the Shawnee National Forest, southern portion of Illinois. It was a first come first serve campground there and we knew that there was some limited sites. So we left really early this morning so that we could get there by noon. And by noon, it was completely booked for the next couple of nights, which left us now what? Well, we opened up iOverlander and we moved ourselves a little bit further south and west, just 30 minutes down the road. We're still in Shawnee National Forest, but we're in Red Bud Campground. That means we're not gonna be able to do the hikes that we had originally planned to do, but we're still excited for some of the stuff that we have found here, so here it comes. With 289,000 acres to explore, Garden of the Gods and Redbud Campgrounds are only two of the several camping options within the Shawnee National Forest. From secluded spots for those seeking solitude to family-friendly campgrounds with modern amenities, no matter which one you choose, they are all first come, first serve, and most are located near lakes or areas of exceptional beauty with hiking, fishing, and sightseeing. Some obviously feel faster than others, and April seems to be the area's most popular time. Across the street from our campground, which was in the Bell Springs Recreation Area, was the trailhead for our connection to several trails. When we set out, we weren't sure how many miles we wanted to put in for the day, but it seemed every step motivated us to take more, and we ended up covering nearly everything this area has to offer. Through the ups and downs, along with several water crossings, we walked among sandstone cliffs, scenic overlooks, and geological formations that caught our interest. For all the positives we experienced, there was one issue, at least for our needs on this visit. There was next to no cellular coverage on T-Mobile nor Verizon. We were able to receive notifications and just enough from time to time to check weather using our magic table. Seriously, our phones seemed to only work when they were sitting on it. For the most part, you are disconnected from the modern world. This disconnection includes Starlink, as the camping areas offer lots of trees for shade, which is typically great, but they blocked any views of the satellites. Well, that hike honestly was absolutely amazing. We ended with just under eight miles and almost 700 feet of elevation gain. Nothing too horrible. A very, very enjoyable day on a bright and sunny, beautiful day. 
as well. We have actually enjoyed our time here in this Redbud campground and this area, I think a lot more than we would have given all the other people. It's been much more quiet here, much more laid back. The camp sites here in this campground are a little more spread out. And honestly, I mean, this, uh, this is basically the backyard of our campsite. It's hard to uh, complain about that. That being said, it's time for us to move on to our next destination on our trip out west and south. And that is Crater of Diamonds. Here we go. And through the magic of video, we just turned seven hours, almost eight, mm -hmm. into seven clips <laughs> or so. <laughs> anyway, we are here uh, while we're out on a stroll, not yes. for epic hiking or no. anything like that. In fact, I have no. quite a bit of work to do while we're here. But what you can do is... Dig for diamonds in this big field. Yeah. <laughs> It's literally a field that they kind of till up and scratch. And apparently yes. there are some yellow and brown diamonds that mm -hmm. people find and here. And colorless ones, if you're lucky. Okay, if you're lucky, colorless ones as well. But anyway, finders keepers on what yes. you find here. Uh, uh -huh. People do find them regularly, some yes. large. In fact, one of the largest that came out of here just happened very recently. You saw yes. that in a Google yep. feed. Yep, that's how I found out about it. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> so anyway, Alana thought that could be a fun stop, yes. something to do. They have good Wi-Fi here. And mm -hmm. what I see is a very nice campground, yep. really nice bathhouse uh, mm -hmm. and bathrooms, at least uh, on the loop that we're staying when we're on site nine for what yes. you've already seen. So I think Alana's going to do some digging while I do some work on this little intermission stop yep. on our way southwest. Wish me luck. Well, good morning, everybody. I am making the quarter mile hike from the campground over to the mine so I can be here when it first opens up. They have tools like screens and buckets and shovels, kneeling pads. So if you don't have yours, they have tools over here for rent, but they're first come first serve. You can't reserve them and they open at eight. So I am making my way over so I can hear when they open up first thing, make sure I have them because they're pretty busy already. So let's go see what we can find. I got my little wagon full of goodies and tools. Let's go see what we can dig up. Well, I got myself way back here in the back, away from everybody. And this nice little field here. You it's not mucky, so let's get digging. Dirt. But I like it. Okay, we're supposed to be looking for anything that looks like a crystal. Mud and dirt do not stick to it. Mud and dirt, so I'm not seeing anything. Alright, well, not that great. Well, that was fun. Uh, digging in the dirt, playing in the water, making mud, you know, all those things kids love to do. And it rubs into the owner kid of me. So I did find three small pieces of calcite, which, you know, it's not worth anything. But my time is up here, so I am making the trek back to the campsite, see what Jay is doing. All right, where he was, was ready for me. Yeah, I had her all packed up, ready to go. We are hitting the road to... Lake Mineral Wells State Park, Texas. <sighs> On to Texas, here we go. <laughs> well, here we are, not too shabby a backyard, if I do say so myself. Now, that being said, our journey here was not without drama, thus no B-roll or anything. <laughs> we ended up splitting 
between a little part mm -hmm. uh, between two storms that had 70 mile an hour gusts an with inch and a quarter to inch and a half inch size hail. Yeah, damaging hail is yeah. what the, it said. So uh, we we hurried, we slowed, we changed our route yes. to kind of dodge between the bad parts uh, yeah. to get us mm -hmm. here. When we pulled in here, the rain was just wrapping up. Yep. So we're setting up and then it's time for bed. I'm not sure if there's going to be a lot of exploring here, yep. but the lake is beautiful. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we'll at least check it out on the way out of here. Other than that, uh, I don't know. We'll see what tomorrow brings. Lake Mineral Wells State Park in Texas is a haven for midlife overlanding and travel enthusiasts. Our morning hike along the three-mile Blue Waterfront Trail showcased stunning views of Lake Mineral Wells with its crystal clear waters and impressive rock formations. This park is perfect for outdoor activities like hiking, rock climbing on the famous Penitentiary Hollow, and kayaking or paddle boarding on the lake. After your adventures, you can relax at one of the four spacious campgrounds or their cozy cabins. Unfortunately, our visit was just overnight, so after our hike, it was time to hit the road. Well, there you go. That was a lovely hike and visit to the mm -hmm. state park there. Wish we had just a little bit more time to explore more that it had to offer, but still, we enjoyed it nonetheless. Yeah. As you can tell by the epicness behind us and the nothing behind us, that we have made our way into the empty part of West Texas, and we are headed to our first planned stop. Chiricahua National Monument in Arizona. That's right. It's on the list often to potentially become the next national park. Whether it makes it or not, I don't know. Whether it's worthy or not, well, you'll have to check it out in our next video. Yeah. We'll see you there. Bye-bye.